Sunshine, blue skies, please go away. A girl has found another and gone away. Okay, I'm sure we all know this by now, but just to make sure, CPUs work in binary. Now, we people don't use the binary system for numbers. We use the decimal system. Now, for outputs that we want to be able to read easily and read quickly, we want the decimal system because otherwise we have to pause the clock and convert the numbers in our head for a second and then resume the clock. It's just a big pain. It'd be way easier to have the numbers output in decimal. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a binary to decimal converter. Now let's talk about how we can even do this. With binary, everything was so easy. We had these eight LEDs that we simply turned on to represent our value. So we only needed two characters, off and on. Then we could just add LEDs to represent larger numbers, aka digits. Now with the decimal system, we need 10 characters though, zero to nine. We can still add extra digits, but the problem is this zero through nine. It makes the decimal system a lot less dynamic and harder to deal with. Now, the fix is this part right here, the seven segment display. Okay, so let's talk about this. We have an LED like this and current flows this way and when it does, the LED turns on. We all know this. Now, for the seven segment display, we have this structure. Now, each one of these bars is an LED. Now, to control these LEDs, we can tie all their anode pins together, called a common anode display, and control them, which of them connects to ground, or we can tie all their cathode pins together, called a common cathode display, and control which of them connects to power. Now, to know which LED we are controlling, we need to name them. So, the way these seven segment displays are named are as follows. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then sometimes there's a decimal point called P. Now it's important to know that we aren't converting binary to decimal because they both represent the same number. Rather we are taking binary and controlling LEDs to look like that value in the decimal number system. As usual there exist chips that do this conversion for us. The one I have is the CD4543B. I do not recommend this chip, and we'll get into why that is later. The reason I chose this chip, though, was the direct LED driving capability, but that's pretty standard. It doesn't say it in the front here, but this chip works with both common anode and common cathode displays, which is the real reason I chose it. Now, you can choose which one you want by changing pin 6. Now, looking at the internal circuitry of this chip, you can understand why I didn't want to build this chip from scratch. For one, it's worthlessly complicated, especially since it only converts 4 bits and not even 8 bits, which is what we need. Taking a look at the truth table, we can see all the pin values, but the output pins don't really matter. What really matters is the display character. Now you can see that it won't display anything past 9, which makes sense because we only have one display, aka only one digit allowed. Now in the past, we've actually gotten around this problem before by using hexadecimal instead of um, decimal system. Hexadecimal has the advantage of fitting all the numbers 0 through 15 on one 7 segment display. So 10 becomes the letter A, 11 becomes the letter B, 12 is C, 13 D, 14 E, and 15 F, like this. Now you can buy chips that do this like the MC14495, but these are really hard to get your hands on. So if you could get it, I would recommend that chip, but nearly all converter ICs only do decimal. I don't know why, it's just near impossible to find hexadecimal. Let me know in the comments though if you know of a chip that could work. Anyway, you can see here at the bottom it says for common cathode LEDs, pH should be 0, which is pin 6, then for common anode, pH should be equal to 1. And on the truth table, you can see that all the given outputs are for pH is equal to 0, but at the bottom it says for pH equals 1, simply inverse the above outputs, which means this IC is compatible with both. Now looking at the pinout, this is one reason I'm not a huge fan of this IC. You can see on the BCD inputs, it has them in this really weird order of C, B, D, A, not even backwards D, C, B, A, or anything sensible. I don't know why that is, but whatever. Just be careful when you hook it up. Now I know it doesn't have the inverted bar, but latch disable is active low, which means this is an active high latch enable, if that makes any sense. So we want to enable this chip, so tie it high. Then blanking is just a clear signal, so tie it low. Then we have our outputs that we can refer to from here. Okay, so now that this is built, we can give it a test. So let's plug in the power and we need to put our wires to control the values of our binary number. Okay, we have zero here and this is a bit bright, so I'm gonna add a 1K resistor. All right, now let's test this. So let's go one, okay, two, okay, four, okay, 
and lastly, 8. Alright, so everything is in the right spot. So if we add 1, it should be 9, which is our max value, because if we add anything more, we get a black screen. So let's try 0011, which gives us 3. Perfect. So this is actually working perfectly. However, this was useless because we need to convert 8 bits to binary, not 4 bits, and 8 bit ICs just simply don't exist because the logic is unbelievably complicated. Instead, we are going to use a more efficient, cheapy method involving an EEPROM to convert 8 bits. However, this chip could be used in our program counter to let us see the addresses more clearly. I don't know how useful that would be since we'd also be missing the addresses 10 through 15. We would just take these four wires though and hook them up to our LEDs if we wanted to. Overall though, I think we've done enough for this video and we'll take a look at an 8-bit system in the next video. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohudin and I will catch you guys later.